Imagine Earth a few centuries from now. Space travel has become accessible, and we travel from planet to planet in spaceships like regular old taxi cabs. But sadly, right now, we wouldn't have enough vacations in our entire lifetime to travel to the neighboring star system. Because to reach the nearest star, Alpha Centauri, which is 4.37 light years away from Earth, we'd have to fly on today's rockets for over 50,000 years. And if we want to get to one of the farthest known stars beyond the Milky Way called Icarus, we'd need 9 billion light years. This means that even moving at the speed of light, we will never cross the Milky Way in a human lifetime. That's why NASA is working on types of engines that could potentially be faster than light. But however hard they try, scientists run into new challenges. In this video, along with our engineer, we'll test different types of engines to try and beat the speed of light. However, to do so, we'll have to find a way to bend the laws of physics. But just how catastrophic is this kind of experiment going to be for the universe? How close to the speed of light can we get? In 2017, Norwegian professor Espen Garda Hauk came up with a new mathematical theory. He claimed that it's actually possible to create a spacecraft that, with the help of photons, can accelerate to 99.999% of the speed of light. A photon has no mass, its electric charge is zero, and it can only exist while traveling at the speed of light. Sounds perfect, doesn't it? But if we want to set a spacecraft in motion with photons, we need a new type of engine, one that can convert light into energy. How claims that the best way to make this project a reality is a solar sail. So let's try building a sail that moves using light. To make one kilogram of matter reach the speed of light, we need a sail with an area of about 100,000 square meters that gives us an acceleration of roughly one meter per second. This means if our engineer weighs 70 kilograms, they'd have to design a square sail with sides longer than two and a half kilometers. That's like 25 football fields laid end to end, and that's not even counting the weight of the spacecraft itself. But here's the good news, at least we don't have to worry about designing a fuel tank since we've got a free and endless source of energy, the sun. It's been burning for around 5 billion years already and will keep on burning for just as long. The beginning of our solar sail journey might be pretty sluggish, but the acceleration will be constant, and thanks to the sun, we can keep it going for years, even decades. In about 100 days of operation, the solar sail can reach a speed of around 14,000 km per hour. After three years, its speed will hit 240,000 km per hour, and then it would only take five years to arrive at Pluto, one of the most distant objects in the solar system. This idea of constant acceleration has prompted several research groups in recent years to test increasingly advanced prototypes of photon engines. In 2015, the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency sent the Light Sail 1 into orbit. Scientists managed to set up a solar sail with an area of 32 square meters on this small satellite. Within a month, the spacecraft, weighing 3,155 kilograms, had its speed increased by approximately 10 meters per second. Moreover, they were able to change its trajectory. This marked the first successful experiment with a solar sail, though it also shed light on its limitations, as the maneuverability of the design was quite low. To optimize the interaction of the photon engine with light particles, NASA is currently developing what they call a diffractive solar sail. The diffractive solar sailing project uses small optical gratings embedded in the thin sails to make better use of the sunlight. In the future, the photon engine will allow us to travel not just within the solar system but also to the nearest star systems. However, there is a problem when it comes to interstellar journeys, the sunlight from the sun just won't cut it. The farther the sail is from it, the fewer photons it can capture. In the hopes of solving this problem, an international project called Breakthrough Starshot plans to build a thousand small solar sails, each weighing no more than one gram. These mini sails will require less light to accelerate. Meanwhile, back on Earth, researchers plan to construct an array of laser installations with a power of 100 gigawatts. Their beams will be directed at the mini sails, helping them speed up in space. The destination of this journey will be Proxima Centauri, the closest star to our Sun. Unfortunately, though, it'll take 30 years to accelerate these tiny photon sails to just 20% of the speed of light. Nevertheless, this will let us leave the solar system by 2030 and pass by Proxima Centauri around 2060. 
but let's imagine for a moment that our engineer managed to push the starship with the photon sail to, let's say, 90% of the speed of light. What do you think awaits them? Well, of course, new challenges. Firstly, for someone moving at such a great speed, time will tick quite differently. Let's say our engineer embarks on a quick trip to Mars and back. It'll take them roughly 16 minutes and 40 seconds to reach the red planet and return to Earth. Now, here's where it gets interesting, four people back on Earth watching our journey to Mars, it will indeed be 16 minutes and 40 seconds. But for our engineer in the Starship, the round trip will only last 8 minutes and 20 seconds. This happens because, at such high speeds, there's a time dilation effect. The closer you get to the speed of light, the more noticeable it becomes. Besides, for our engineer, the space ahead of the ship will appear flattened into a blurry tunnel. After a while, they'll see nothing but darkness up ahead. The thing is, light waves simply won't catch up to them because they'll be moving at the same speed. In other words, there will be nothing but endless darkness before our engineer. So, in theory, scientists already know how to accelerate to the speed of light, but for now, the photon engine doesn't allow us to do that. You see, to achieve the necessary acceleration, we'd need a massive amount of materials to build the sail itself and an incredible amount of energy to power the lasers required to speed it up. To solve this problem, we'll have to create a more powerful engine that works on a different principle. Scientists have already come up with a theoretical plan for such a device. So, what's stopping us from turning it into reality? Theoretical physicists suggest using an antimatter propulsion system for space travel. It's a concept for a rocket engine that utilizes antimatter in combination with regular matter to generate energy for space flight. When these two types of matter react with each other, they can create an enormous amount of energy. It's 300 times more powerful than that of nuclear fusion, a thousand times greater than that of nuclear decay, and 10 billion times greater than that of ordinary chemical reactions. But here's the rub, where do we get so much antimatter? After all, it's an extremely rare and complex substance to produce. Creating and storing it requires a colossal amount of energy. That's why engineers have been pondering the development of a hybrid engine to reduce the needed amount of antimatter. One concept of this kind was developed back in 1992 at the University of Pennsylvania, and they called it the Antimatter Catalyzed Microfusion Drive. Its operation revolved around a fuel capsule containing deuterium, tritium, and uranium, 238. This capsule was fired into a reactor chamber where it was first bombarded with ions and then hit with an antiproton beam. When interacting with the antiprotons, part of the matter in the capsule is annihilated. This produces enough energy to trigger the decay of uranium, 238, which in turn initiates the fusion reaction with deuterium and tritium. This energy powers big electromagnets that heat the plasma. Then, magnetic. Fields direct the plasma flow and shoot it out of the nozzle, creating thrust and setting the spacecraft in motion. The advantage of this system is that it needs relatively little antimatter for space travel. For example, to reach Pluto, you'd only need 100 grams of antimatter. That may sound like a very small amount, but not when it comes to antimatter. The point is, scientists produce it using particle accelerators capable of generating tens of millions of antiprotons per minute. That sounds convincing until you realize that at that rate, it would take tens of billions of years to produce just one gram of antimatter. Have you heard of antimatter referred to as the most expensive substance on Earth? It's true. One gram of it can cost hundreds or even thousands of trillions of dollars. And it's not just about creating antiparticles, you also need to figure out a way to store them since antimatter annihilates upon contact with matter. We clearly can't just put it in a container and call it a day. That's when we need special electromagnetic traps, like, for instance, penning traps. These devices, using magnetic fields in a high vacuum and at low temperature, can hold onto antimatter. Currently, portable traps are being developed, and they may later let scientists move the substance to other labs. One such mechanism is being developed at the European Organization for Nuclear Research, but at the moment, it's almost two meters long and weighs a ton. Assuming our engineer has enough antimatter, how safe would it be to travel on a starship equipped with an engine like that? 
Let's say our engineer accelerated the ship beyond the speed of light and is traveling in space without consequences for their body. But there's another problem. The hull of the starship will receive a lot of damage from small particles, like cosmic dust and gas molecules. Upon colliding with these particles at a speed close to the speed of light, the energy will be enough to obliterate the ship's hull. So for the time being, it's safer to test antimatter engines on smaller space probes. Okay, but let's dream big. What kind of engine would you need to travel not just across space but across time? And most importantly, is it even possible? It turns out that traveling in time is already possible. And no, I don't mean traveling to the past or the future like in science fiction. Actually, there's one theory called the FTL engine, which implies that it's possible to travel faster than the speed of light. The concept was suggested by Mexican scientist Miguel Alcubierre back in 1994. He theorized that spacetime itself could be folded in such a way that you can cover great distances in a short period of time. This could be done with the help of an advanced propulsion system, which works on the principle of the famous Alcubierre drive. Imagine spacetime as a sheet of paper. To move from one end of the sheet to the other, you don't have to walk across it, you can just fold the sheet and step from one end to the other. Such an engine compresses the space in front of the starship while expanding it behind. In this way, the ship could travel at speeds faster than light. Theoretically, this method allows you to make a round trip to the nearest star in a few weeks. But there's a catch, in the process of folding space, the ship remains at rest, while it's space itself that's moving. According to the principle of the Alcubierre drive, the craft should have a specially designed energy generator capable of manipulating space-time. This would create a bubble around the starship, within which time would flow at the same rate as outside it. But the energy required to create such a bubble is mind-boggling. Scientists estimate you'd need the energy equivalent to the mass of the entire universe, and that's just for one trip. That's the amount of energy that would be released if you destroyed the entire universe. It's an almost impossible task. Moreover, if the starship could move faster than light, it would distort spacetime and create so-called time loops. As a result, time travel to the past would become possible, but this could create paradoxes that would fundamentally change our understanding of the universe. This sounds like something straight out of a sci-fi movie, right? But scientists continue to explore these theoretical concepts in hopes of finding a way to make them a reality. Perhaps in the future, we'll discover new physical principles that will allow us to travel faster than light, or even manipulate spacetime in ways we can't yet imagine. For now, our engineer must keep working on more practical and feasible methods, like photon and antimatter engines, to push the boundaries of human space exploration.